أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت الأليم الحكيم ففهمنا سليمان وكلنا أتينا حكما وعلما رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل أقضة من لساني يفقه قولي لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الألي الأذيم سبحانك لما وهنانيك ألم لا تنسني ولا تنسني الحمد لله أفضل الحمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه النبي والصالحين وسلم على موفقني واهدني وسددني واجمعني بين الصواب والثواب واعذني من الخطا والهمان امين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته and welcome to another episode of questions and answers i'm your host amjid muhammad and i'll be with you for the remainder of this hour uh, dealing with your questions your queries and your curiosities it is the last questions and answers for the week as it is friday and it is a weekly show running from monday to friday shared between myself and my colleague mohan fazal dasa uh, who takes monday tuesday and then i have the wednesday thursday and friday if you have a question or a query then remember the call the number to call is the studio number please do not get it confused with my office number the studio number is 01274 214299 that's 01274 214299 that is the studio number if you ring my office number i'll be able to hear it but i cannot answer it because i'm sat here the one to ring 01274 214299 then my colleague adil who is always at the ready uh, will pick that call up uh, in his little uh, production room that is sat in and he will patch it through into the studio so that i can hear you through the speakers and also in my earpiece so you don't need to shout too much uh and also what you need to do is turn your volume on your tv completely off uh or turn it right down because there's always an echo because as as you know a split second delay of a second or two uh between it being me speaking it and it going out Uh, live on your screens so what you'll find is that there will be an echo as though when i speak a second or two second later i will say the same thing uh you'll hear it through the phone and you'll hear it through your tv and it'll get a little bit confusing so when you do call please mute your tv or turn the volume down uh if on the other hand you don't wish to call then you may email and as you can see are they are they ever ready as he knows without being told as we said we will for the next couple of weeks at least um have my email there visible at all times so you become more familiar with it uh you become used to it you make note of it you share it i don't mind you sharing my email address um because any emails which are sent on there only i receive uh, so you can send your questions on there which is amjad.muhammad a m j a d dot m o h a w m e d at al khair a l k h a i r dot org okay If you email on there I will actually receive those emails uh, on my phone. Uh, so it is that quick as soon as I receive it on my phone I will answer live here in the studio. I will not answer it on the email. Um and if I do receive emails um through the day then obviously I will respond to them if I'm in the office and if I'm live I will answer the question on air. Do remember that all these Q&A are available on Iqra TV's YouTube channel uh, which is surprisingly called Iqra TV okay so if you search on uh, YouTube for Iqra TV and subscribe to it then you will get a reminder or a notification whenever a new video pops up and therefore whenever these questions and answers are done then Wednesday one is available within 24 hours as is the Thursday one the Friday one being at the end of the week will be available on monday inshallah within sort of whatever it is 72 hours uh, so you can even if you missed the live session and you asked a question and you missed the session then you can pick it up on those as well so there's so many ways that you can have your questions answered as i mentioned yesterday as well one of the things we are doing and i have been busy with uh is uh trying to get uh people and businesses clothes businesses uh, to donate uh clothes and household items uh for the flood victims in Pakistan as i said two local stores uh gave mashallah a significant amount uh doom designs here in Bradford and also Homa's boutique here in Bradford 
uh, gave uh, actual items off their shelf, Homaz in particular. He did not go into some old, danky, cold, damp storage room and pull some old clothes out. He actually told our colleagues to say, look, go up to the shelves and pick one of this, pick one of that, pick one of that. So Alhamdulillah, you know, he donated and he donated generously. May Allah uh, accept it from him. Uh, similarly, we had uh, Doom Designs also donating some and he did say that he is going to do a full stock check in a couple of weeks' time and he believes that he has lots more material upstairs uh, that he will be able to give as well. So that shows, Alhamdulillah, that you know, there's more opportunity coming uh, and uh, for people to give and that's only two shops out of whatever it is that exists in Bradford alone. So if you are watching uh, and you know a shopkeeper or you are a shopkeeper, uh, a clothes shop and we know many sisters sell clothes from home as well they don't necessarily uh, have a store but they just sell it to friends and family from their front room so sisters if you're listening uh, or if you have clothes yourself at home that aren't you know uh, tatty or ready to be thrown away but that can be reused or household items that are useful don't give household items which are broken what you said there to us they're going to end up falling into a skip and therefore we would have to then you know hire a skip and cost more money um, so if you do get them you can get them to any branch of Al Khair Foundation uh, there are eight branches um, up and down the country uh, but obviously if you're in Yorkshire uh, then it would be the Bradford branch which is on Manchester Road uh, BD5 uh, you can search for the address and then you know the office is open between half past ten and half past six and you can come and drop whatever you need to drop off here uh, and it will be gratefully received. There are several tankers, containers rather, that will be sent at the end of the year across to Pakistan by ship and therefore you have several weeks to get that together and get it across to a branch of Al Khair Foundation and it will make its way across to Pakistan. So, you know, it might be something that you're never going to wear again and we know many sisters have wardrobes and wardrobes and wardrobes full of clothes uh, which they may only wear once and then never wear again. You know where that's going to end up. Eventually, it's going to end up in the bin. So why not get ajir for it as well? Why not get reward for it as well? Give it with the near of clothing somebody. Give it with the near of keeping somebody warm in this cold winter and you will get ajir for it as well. So not only have you benefited from that dress in that you wore it for a particular occasion, but also now you are giving it in as sadaqah. And for as long as that garment is worn, you will get reward for it. As soon as that garment is of no use whatsoever and it's been thrown away, then your reward will stop. But for the period, however long it is, the weeks, the months, the years, that, that clothes, those clothes are being worn, you will get reward for it. So take advantage of that opportunity. We've also been working on a potential uh, project uh, that we will be launching with Islam TV. Uh, so watch this space, inshallah. Uh, we will keep you uh, a brief of that as we go along. Uh, anyway, so let's deal with some of the questions and answers that we are receiving. So again, let me remind you of the number 01274 214299. Let me pick up some questions that we have received uh, on our um, channels. Okay, so let's go here. Assalamu alaikum of Sab. A lady was sick for a long time and couldn't wash her Napa clothes. So a kind of white fungus grew on them a few days back. She washed them but found traces of that fungus left on her clothes after drying. Now she's asking me whether those clothes be considered spark or not. She also said that the fungus grew on the places where there was blood. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fungus itself is not considered as an impurity, even if it grew on the blood. As long as the blood has been removed, then those garments would be considered as pure and permissible to pray in. Uh, so she shouldn't have doubt or have fear that the clothes that she is performing her salah in are considered as impure. As long as she has removed whatever she needs to remove from them, uh, then that would be absolutely fine. Okay. Um, if she has been sick for a while, uh, then you know she should have tried to get some help from somebody. I don't know where this sister is based, whether she's based in a uh, Western developed country or based in a Eastern developing country uh, or she's alone or she's with somebody or whatever. I don't know the specifics. But I'm quite surprised that she was sick for such a long time 
and she couldn't wash her clothes and there was nobody around to wash her clothes for her. Because if she couldn't wash her clothes, how did she eat? Um, you know, what did she do about her dishes? Uh, so, you know, I'm a little bit sort of concerned. Some of these questions, when they are put to me, uh, it just seems as though there's something not right, if, if, if you know what I mean. Okay, next question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What's the virtues of parents in the hereafter whose children are students of knowledge? Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If it, the parents are the cause of their children being pious, for instance, the house uh, that was one in which people were inclined towards act, um, being pious, uh, learning the deen, studying the deen, children were inculcated in that environment, and they also became like that, then obviously for every religious act that their children perform, they will get an ajr for it. So in essence, their children are their sadaqa jariya, an immense sadaqa jariya. Because as long as those children now do, as long as they're alive, their reward for those acts of worship, not only will the children get, their parents will get, even when their parents die. Once those children now become adults and they themselves have children and they share the same habits and the same practices that they were raised in by their parents, then that reward will continue even with the grandchildren. So it is a sadhka jari, it is an immense reward because most rewards, unfortunately, when the act, when the act is performed, cease to exist. Okay, as soon as the act is, when you pray your salah, you will get rewarded for that salah. Khalas, it's done. When you fast, then you will get rewarded for that fast. As soon as the fast is done, it's, it's done. So that is the advantage of these acts of sadaqa jariya. Anyway, on that note, alhamdulillah, we have had a caller who's called on 01274 214299. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear caller. Wa alaikum I'm good. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Nice to hear your voice. Nice to hear a voice, shall I say. Thank you very much indeed. It's just been a couple of days and last week was a bit busy. Alhamdulillah. And last, last Friday you weren't taking calls again, so uh, I thought <laughs> I'd join you today. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Good right. to hear. Good and how to hear. is family and how is your daughters and your sons-in-laws? Alhamdulillah. They're all doing fantastically well. Um, they're all, mashallah, you know, in good health, in good afia, in good state of mind and in good iman. Oh, Ameen. Jazak khair for asking and I pray the same for all your loved ones as well. Jazak khair. Thank you. If you remember my niece who had a patient, That's she's right. doing very, very well indeed. Alhamdulillah. And with Allah's rahmat, may Allah grant all our mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, sons and daughters, all of them good, good health with Ameen. all our in-laws. Amin. Amin. It's something we take for granted, isn't it, my brother? It that, is, you know, good is. health is something which, you know, even with the minor thing, you know, suffering from something as minor as constipation, which is not a serious thing, but trust me, when you suffer from it, it becomes such a major issue. And, you know, these little, little things which we take so much for granted, you know, relieving oneself in the bathroom, is such a minor thing, you know, somebody who has a, uh, 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 you know, a, a difficulty in passing urine, the pain that, you know, yeah. people go through in just the most simplest of things, the, yeah. the tears that well up in their eyes when they know they have to go to the toilet and they have yeah. to pass the urine. And we just take it for granted, don't we? No, you're 100% right, and the, and the reason we take it for granted is we are becoming ungrateful to, for all the remnants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us. And the day we go back to these blessings that Allah has bestowed on us, the ummah will be again giving example to the rest of the human race. Amen. 100%. 100%. I think that's the first thing is, you know, realizing what f good fortunate position that we are in. Uh, and always, you know, they say the glass is half empty or the glass is half full. It's the glass is full, we should say, because half is water and half is air. <laughs> so we should always well be said. looking. Well yeah, we should always be positive about everything that we have, you know. And, and sometimes, you know, in extreme circumstances, I was speaking to a sister two days ago. She phoned in the office and she had lost her daughter uh, last year, unfortunately, uh, was murdered by her, her son-in-law. 
and she was finding it very, very oh. difficult to come to terms with it. It was her only daughter, 30 odd years old. Um, and, yeah, uh, you know, it, yeah, yeah, yeah the, so she was in a very, very difficult place. So, you know, it's, sometimes we can, unfortunately, you know, sort of switch off and, 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 and not see the ni'mats around us. We can become blind to it. So we've got to continuously remind ourselves, don't we? True, totally agree with you. The reason I'm ringing today is, uh, you know, as you know yourself, the football is happening in Kuwait, or Qatar, sorry, in Qatar. In Qatar, yes, yeah. In Qatar, so thank you for correcting me, pronouncing it properly like a Muslim. Right? <laughs> I've heard, <laughs> I've heard the uh, commentators pronouncing it, and it makes me yeah. wince that you yeah, know here we are, yeah. we're being educated in how we should be doing and what we should be doing, and yet we cannot pronounce the word properly, and you know it's just a bit. It's a bit alarming, yeah, but yeah, Qatar, we need to make sure that whenever we pronounce uh, Arabic words, that we pronounce them in the, in the tone and in the, in the manner in which the, 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 they are supposed to be pronounced. Inshallah, inshallah. What I'm concerned with is we are such proud Muslims in UK and throughout the whole world, but I'd like you to please, please, I beg you to have a word with the producers in Al Akhra program. Why is it that you you lack of, you know, praising our brothers, what a lovely job they have done in Qatar. They have, mashallah, opened the ceremony with the recitation of the Quran, with the recitation of... I don't know if you saw it. No, no, no. I, I, I've been watching glimpses. Obviously, I, I, I'm on social media, so when you go to your Twitter account or whatever account, then there's little clips here and there. So, yeah, I have been following things. Uh, I am a keen... Uh, I was a keen footballer when I was young, uh, a few years ago. You're still young. <laughs> I like you more. <laughs> but what I'm concerned with it, you know, you look at the world, you know, you look at the other beliefs, the other books of Allah that has been blessed on they blow their trumpet they make so much noise they make why is it your producers have not even shown a clip on, you know forget all the rubbish that the, the European media is trying to portray the beautiful brothers job they've done, they are martial, martial are showing the all their guests how to welcome and every person as you know i live in wales every person that has got relatives and friends have gone up to Qatar. they are saying brother javid well they don't call me brother javid i have another nickname but it's <laughs> we'll leave that we'll leave that one for now shall we javid you know, I can't tell you that how happy my loved ones are in Qatar. They are so happy. They have been so welcomed. The Welsh have been so welcomed in Qatar. But why is it your producers have not shown anything to do with that? I mean, we should be proud. I'm a very proud Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, mashallah. I used to have a lot of student properties. I used to make it my business for them to know that I am a Muslim. Why? Because the media portrayed so much evilness on Islam, so much evilness on our belief, and yet, here we are. I mean, don't you dare take it personally. No, 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 no. I, I think it's a very, so I think much. it's a, I, love you so much. I think it's a very valid. You haven't, even you haven't talked about them. <laughs> yeah, it's know, a very, it's a, why it's a, not? Yeah, it's a very you valid. Know, you, look, you know, there's a WhatsApp going around now by, you know, Mr. Uh, Morgan Freeman, yeah? Yes. He is saying, I cannot believe how beautiful this religion is. I yes. cannot believe how welcoming these people have welcomed me. I can't believe all the messages they are telling us. And I can assure you, I will be letting people know what a beautiful religion being a Muslim is. Alhamdulillah. I mean, why are you not talking about, why are you talking about something that, you know, tomorrow it will be the end of the World Cup example, yeah? Take this chance to let our youngsters know how proud we are. Alhamdulillah. Let the youngsters know what a lovely job they've done. And let the youngsters know what a beautiful Muslim football players they are. 
from you know, No, 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 you, absolutely. You yourself, if yeah. you ask that question, did the survey, I don't know, let me tell you, I may know three or four names of my mothers, mothers in the sense of our Nabi's wives. I may only know three or four names, right? But do we know, do we know the, all the names of his wives? Do we know the names of all his daughters? 100%. I only know one name. Yeah. Our, our mother, uh, Fatima, I, I can never forget that. Yes. But what I'm trying to say to you is we live in a 21st yeah. century. The children need to wake up and lift their shoulders up yeah. and say, I'm a proud Muslim. Alhamdulillah. I'm just going to jump in there, brother. Jazakman Akhir for that because we've got 30 seconds left before we go off air. Uh, when I say off air, I mean just for a short inter uh, intervention, for a short break. And uh, inshallah, Jazakman Akhir for the call. Fantastic. I broke my duck. I thought it was going to be three days in a row and there'd be no call, but thanks for that, Brother Javed. Long call, but a very important call. Uh, some important points raised about pride in our religion, pride in our faith and uh, things of that matter, but we are due for a break, so we will return shortly and deal with that, inshallah, on our return. Jazakum khairan again.